morning. I greet you this morning in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and a very warm welcome to each and every one of you as we worship together here as the St. Thomas Reformed Church. And it is just great to be in uh, God's house and to welcome you in virtually. Pray for God's blessing over each and every one of you as we worship together today. I am very excited today to welcome into the service uh, and to celebrate one of our youth uh, who is offering her gift of music, Ellis Weishart, uh, will play a piano piece today for our offering and it's spectacular. Thank you, Ellis, for being part of the service today. I also want to begin to take a trip with you down memory lane, only going back uh, three years and up until very recently, Obviously, three years ago, we were uh, coming together after hurricanes, Irma and Maria, and ever since then, groups had started to come down and help us rebuild. And so, starting today and the weeks to follow, we're just going to kind of check in with some of those groups, see what they're doing, uh, and welcome them into our service virtually. Uh, This week, the Colts Neck Reformed Church will join us as part of our service. And I look forward to sharing more about what they're doing and to see uh, and hear from them during today's service uh, after the offering. So now just let us come and remember uh, what Jesus did on our behalf, going to the grave, rising again to give us uh, the hope of new life. Let us come together now and worship the Lord together.
Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. Amen. Let us pray. O God, we come before you this day. We hunger and we thirst for your word and for the communion of your spirit gathered here. Fresh as each morning, you come to us, O crafter and creator of manna, your grace rests gently on us, waiting to be gathered, to become the bread of life we share throughout the day. Choosing to give as you desire, you show us the last so we can make them first in our hearts and hopes and doing no wrong, Lord, you make us right with God for all time. When we would grumble, Lord, you give us the gospel to live out and when we protest, you would give us and teach us songs of praise. When we would utter laments, you fill us with God's laughter. Lord, let our worship today be filled with all of these things. And let all things now living give praise and honor and glory to your holy name. Amen. We continue to believe that we must somehow earn our way into God's heart. But God, God's grace is given to each of us 
freely, unconditionally, always. Let us open our lives to God's mercy as we pray. It seems, it seems we cannot, we cannot decide. decide, God of glory. glory. We say we, say we, we will, will live to serve others, others but, end but end up meeting, meeting only our needs. needs. We, we claim, claim to live in a way that honors Christ, but we do not we take, take him to work, work school, or home. home. We, we believe, believe that, that the gospel can transform lives, lives at, at least, least for those who need it, it, but surely but not us. us. Forgive, Forgive us, us, Prince of Peace. Instead, instead of grumblers, may we may be ambassadors of grace. Instead of continual complaining, may we carry compassion to the hurting. Instead of whiners, may we be workers with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, to reach out and bring the kingdom of God to everyone we meet. This is the good news. There is no ranking in God's kingdom. God's graces, God graces everyone with the same gifts, mercy, restoration, and life. God has kept the covenant. We have been forgiven. We have been made new people. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Today, we come to God's word in the book of Exodus. Today, we begin with chapter 16, verse 2. I wasn't quite sure why the lectionary brought me to, or started with verse 2, until I read verse 1. Read verse, verse 1 is, the whole congregation of the Israelites set out from Elim, and Israel came to the wilderness of Sin, which is between Elim and Sinai on the 15th day of the second month after they had departed from the land of Egypt. Oh, so now I understand. Verse 1 just sets up the place and the time where this story happens. Verse 2 begins, the whole congregation complained. Clearly, the point being, it doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter when, because it happens everywhere, all the time. It can happen anywhere, anytime. Complaining against God is just something that happens everywhere, all the time. Insert your name, your place, your time. This could be your story, our story. Great way to start, huh? Nice, Pastor Jeff, just alienate your entire listening audience is he talking about me? Is he saying I complain? Never. This is Exodus chapter 16, beginning at verse 2. 
The whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. And the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you. And each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. In that way I will test them, whether they will follow my instruction or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that it was the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what are we that you complain against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gives you meat to eat in the evening and your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you utter against him, what are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, Say to the whole congregation of Israelites, Draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I have heard the complaining of the Israelites. Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening, quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. When the layer of dew lifted, there on the surface of the wilderness was a fine, flaky substance, as fine as the frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what, what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Forever. In that way, God says, I will test them whether they will follow my instruction or not. How about not? <laughs> I could have told you that, God. Without the test, I could have saved you the trouble. They're not going to follow your instructions. They haven't followed your instructions since you instructed them not to eat the fruit of the tree in the Garden of Eden. Why do you think they're going to start following your instructions all of a sudden now? When it comes to human behavior, is not the past the greatest predictor of the future? Let me ask you something. I think there are two kinds of people in this illustration, and let me ask you to think about which kind of person you are. Are you the kind of person that when you get something new and something that maybe has the label on it, some assembly required, do you very obediently open the package and pull out the instructions and begin reading them from beginning to end before you even pick up that little Allen wrench that's included and start assembling? Or are you like me and you just tear it open and you start assembling it and you say, I got this, I know how to do this. It can't be that hard. Reading the instructions just takes more time and I don't have more time. You know, you can take years off your life just by reading the instructions. Of course, I'm also the one who typically gets halfway through the assembly and then it's like, uh, what did I do with those instructions? And with that one illustration, I just summed up this and every other human story since. God gives us the instructions. We set the instructions aside. I got this. It can't be that hard. I don't have time to read the instructions. We get halfway through. 
Some of you might call it a, a midlife crisis. Is this all there is? I don't know how to do this. And that's when we think, hmm, maybe I should read the instructions. Yeah, I sure have made a mess of my life. I put it all together backwards. There are pieces missing. I need some help. Help. What were the instructions in this story to the Israelites? Verse 4. I'm going to the Lord said to Moses, I'm going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for that day. Gather enough for that day. Did the people follow God's instructions? Nope. No. Like I said, why would they? Never have. Why would they? And that's partly human nature. Offer something to someone for free, and they will take it. And especially if they are close to desperation. If they are, like, wandering in the wilderness, and they don't know when it's going to end, and they're in the darkness, and they're unsure of the future. They will take as much as they can. Re recall with me, if you can remember, those of you who are here for um, St. Thomas, as we were reeling from back-to-back -back Category 5 hur hurricanes just three years ago, Irma and Maria, as you may recall, somehow manna from heaven just came raining down into this sanctuary from heaven or from St. Croix and from Puerto Rico, actually, to begin with. And our sanctuary was filled with food. Food enough for each day. And we started to give that food away. And there were some who came, who took, who said thank you, and who walked away. Because they knew that in a day or two we would do it again. And there were those who came and took and tried to take more, and tried to grab, and some who went around the block and changed their shirt, and then came back again to try to take more, as if God didn't notice and doesn't recognize you in your new shirt. Now listen, I don't begrudge anyone food when food insecurity is fierce and stomachs are emptier than cupboards. And there really isn't much hope that tomorrow there's going to be suddenly, miraculously, something in the refrigerator. I don't have these food insecurities, clearly, because I typically have food. And if I don't have it, I have means to obtain it. I know this, and I know that I am blessed. And I, am, I know that no matter what, I will have my daily bread. And isn't that the point? Isn't that the point? God is promising the whole congregation. Like, saying, like God's saying to us, I know it's hard. I know it's tough out there. I know you might even have reason to complain. You are hungry. You are tired. You are stressed out. But follow my instructions. Take what you need for today, and tomorrow I will give you what you need for tomorrow, your daily bread. And then the next day I will give you what you need for that day, and so on and so on. Like the hymn that we're going to sing at the end of the service today, all you may need, God will provide. God will take care of you. It's not just an empty promise. God will take care of you. Or another favorite hymn, which we are not going to sing today, Morning by Morning, New Mercies I See, All I Have Needed, Thy Hand Have Provided. Great is Thy Faithfulness, Lord unto me. Not so great is my faithfulness, Lord unto you. Because clearly, I do not trust you enough to give me what I need for today. God instructed them, just take enough for today. 
today. Yeah, but I don't know what tomorrow may bring, so... God says, I know, but just trust that tomorrow there will be enough for tomorrow. Yeah, that's great in theory, but trust is a difficult thing. Do you trust God to give you what you need? Your daily bread. I know, easy for you to say, Pastor Jeff, you have a job that still gives you a paycheck, at least for now. You have a house to live in. You have food in your refrigerator, bread to eat every day. And even if you didn't, you have family who would share their bread if you needed it. Yes. And again, isn't that the point? We have family, church. The church is a place, and we've witnessed it where new mercies fall from heaven, where the hungry are filled and the thirsty find drink. And it is a place where anxiety and insecurity about tomorrow, like a Category 5 hurricane, eventually disappear. Why do you worry about tomorrow, Jesus asked. Why do you worry about tomorrow? If you are anxious, pray. Oh, you don't know what to pray? Try this. Our Father who art in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. I imagine God's answer to that prayer, at least in this story, which remember is our story, I just did. I just did. I did give you enough bread for this day. And I told you to gather up enough for this day. And that tomorrow, I would do the same thing. I would give you enough for that day. But you didn't listen to me. You didn't follow my instructions. So now, you're anxious. And now you're stressed. And you're afraid. And you're even jealous because you see that your neighbor has more bread than you do. That is no way to live, my children. That is no way to live. Follow my instructions. Listen to my word. Trust. I was there for you yesterday. I am here for you today. I will be there for you tomorrow. I know. I know. I know, Lord. I know. Give us today, just today, our daily bread. And I guess while you're at it, Lord, forgive us our sin. Forgive us our sin. Give us, forgive us, Lord, today, tomorrow, and always. Amen. As you give your gifts, tithes, and offerings, please enjoy this gift of music by our own Ellis Wiseheart as she plays this classic sonatina.
talk about hope for the future. Thank you, Ellis, for that gift. Speaking of hope, three years ago, as I said, we who live here on St. Thomas were all trying to pick up the pieces of our lives after hurricanes Irma and Maria destroyed our island. Soon after, uh, we were blessed with scores of volunteers who began arriving on our shores to help us rebuild. In the next few weeks during our services, we will hear from some of those groups and reflect back on the manna they brought with them, the hope that they brought. And each week we will pray for them now as they minister to their own congregations in their own context through this global pandemic. Before COVID arrived and put a stop to travel, we had hosted 171 volunteers who together worked for a combined 5,762 volunteer hours. They brought with them food, supplies, labor, skill, humor, and the best of all, the love of Christ, hope for tomorrow, for so many who suffered through uh, Ermaria. One of those groups was from the Colts Neck Reformed Church, who brought two groups in September and October of 2018. 26 volunteers in their groups logged 791 and a half volunteer hours. Much of their work was done rebuilding and supporting the Salvation Army, speaking of giving daily bread to those in need. Colts Neck Reformed Church is located in Colts Neck, New Jersey, in Monmouth County. Their pastor is my brother-in-law, Reverend Scott Brown, who is married to my sister, Kay. Remember, I said the church is family. Family is the church. They just last week, for the first time in six months, were able to gather outdoors for worship. Here they are. Good morning, St. Thomas Reformed Church. Good morning, grace and peace to you. I was recently reminded that it was two years ago that we were down there, hard to believe, hard to believe. We here in Colts Neck, New Jersey want you at St. Thomas to know that we still hold you in your, our memories and that we're grateful for the opportunity you've been down there. Your amazing grace and hospitality still sits in our hearts. Good morning and blessings one and all. I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to get to know your church. And one of the things that will stay with me forever was the welcome that you gave us. I was so graced by just being on the steps of your church and under your patio and the way that you greeted us and served us like we were friends forever. Thank you and bless you all. One of the things that will always stick with me is the joy you found in worship with the dancing and the beautiful, beautiful interpretation of our word. Thank you and God bless. And so we are just grateful for having been with you two years ago, continue to be with you in prayer. From Scott Brown, the pastor of the Colts Neck Reformed Church, for my friends, this is certainly not both groups. We had a lot more people, but because of social distancing and other requirements, not everybody's able to be here, but everybody joins in our good wishes of God's blessings for you as you remember, as you build, as you proclaim the good news. Peace in the name of Christ. With gratitude for the ways that you have supported us, Colts Neck Reformed Church, in prayer we now lift you up as you continue to minister to your people in Monmouth County and throughout the larger kingdom of Christ. We pray for your health, for your well-being, and that you can stay strong and effective and connected. Let us pray together. Well, God, our Creator, we love you, and in our worship today, we just give thanks, Lord. We thank you for the many myriad ways that you have blessed us throughout our lives. Not the least of these, Lord, is through other churches and other groups that have come and and who have worked with us and labored with us for your kingdom. 
We thank you for our faithful brothers and sisters in Christ at Colts Neck Reformed Church. Lord, we ask for your blessing upon them. Bless their pastors, their leaders, their consistory, and all those who work together uh, in their ministry as they minister to so many throughout this pandemic and through this pandemic. Lord, keep them healthy, keep them strong, bind them together as they are the body of Christ. And we thank you for the ways that they have blessed us here in St. Thomas, that we continue to work together for the larger kingdom. Lord, thank you for the promise that we can trust your word, that we can rely on your grace, and that our daily bread really is given to us if we would but just trust you. Help us to continue to seek to meet the needs of those who are less fortunate and who do uh, struggle with uh, food anxiety and other anxieties and just Help us, Lord, to continue to reach out and to minister to those in need. And even within our own congregation, may we continue to meet together virtually as we are today and throughout the week, reaching out to one another with love and concern, with care and compassion, exhibiting the very uh, nature of Christ himself. God, we put our fears, we put them into your hands and pray for the blessing of your Holy Spirit over each and every one as we continue to live our lives in this world, walking by faith and not by fear. Lord, bless all of those in need with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. In your name, we now lift up this prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen, amen. I cannot say it any better than that. God will take care of you today and tomorrow and every day. As you live, live, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.